Good evening, Aggies. We'd like to welcome everybody to this evening's uh, Founders Day and Old Main Society celebration. Thank you to uh, Caleb Esmond for the beautiful background music we enjoyed during dinner. <laughs> Caleb is a master's student from the Kane College of the Arts, pursuing his degree in piano uh, performance and pedagogy. So I am excited that you have joined us this evening to celebrate the 135th anniversary of our fantastic institution and the 55th annual recognition of the Old Main Society. I'm Marshall Crawford, I chair the foundation board. I am a proud Aggie and a member of the Old Main Society as well. This event is a long-standing tradition here at Utah State and we are pleased that you're able to join us this evening. Tonight, I'd like to welcome and acknowledge some of the individuals and groups who are joining us here this evening. So first and foremost, of course, our president, Noelle Cockett, and her husband, John. Our USU administrators who are here this evening. Old Main Society and Founders Day honorees and their guests, representatives of the USU Board of Trustees, members of the USU Foundation Board and Alumni Association Executive Board, members of our college boards, and members of the Old Main Society, and a special guest representing Fort Valley State University, Karen Wright. This year's theme is Stories of Aggie Impact. Many of you were able to join us in November for our campaign launch of our initiative-driven campaign called Create Your Aggie Impact. And tonight, we are going to build on that campaign theme and showcase some of the stories of inspirational people who have, in fact, created their Aggie Impact. They are an example to all of us and we are proud to claim them as part of our Aggie family. In our pre-event reception, we gave all of you uh, an opportunity to share your stories, and following the program, we'll return to the International and Sunburst Ballroom, and there you'll have a chance for a dessert reception, and if you didn't get a chance to record your stories in the video booths or write messages to students, you'll have another opportunity to do that at that time. So please continue to enjoy eating as we recognize our honorees and share their stories that celebrate the incredible impact our Aggie family has made. I'll now turn the time over to another great USU alumni and Aggie, our Alumni Advisory Board President, Steve Palmer, who will present the Founders Day Awards. Steve? Thank you, Marshall. <clears throat> Tonight, we're excited to honor a couple of our distinguished alumni. I'd like to first invite President Noel Cockett to join me on the stage. We'll begin with the Distinguished Alumni Award, which is one of the highest awards given by the university. For her exemplary civic service, professional accomplishments, and philanthropy, I am thrilled to introduce our recipient for this year's award, Melanie Rice Moffitt. <laughs> Known as warm, enthusiastic, accessible, and caring, Melanie is an educator who enjoys working with special needs students and those who have the goal of attending college as first generation students. Her long teaching career is equally matched by her generous community advocacy and she enjoys giving back to her alma mater as a member of the Advancement Board of the Emma Eccles Jones College of Education and Human Services. Melanie, as a teacher, she is la reina de la escuela. She runs 
uh, that Dream Big program she, and the students all call her the queen of the schools. So her, her personality, her, her dedication to the kids, and her lo the love that she has for the kids is unparalleled. I was fortunate that I had a supportive family and I had parents that knew the system. And I see these students that are completely capable of graduating from college and they just need somebody to believe in them and somebody to tell them and navigate them and help them get there. The genesis of Dream Big was I was helping some of my son's friends um, who were first generation uh, prepare for college and I realized that there was a gap in what their parents knew and what I knew. And as I was guiding these two young men, I realized that other students would benefit from this. So I came up with a plan and I talked to Dr. Foley and she supported it. And with the generous grant from Utah State, I was able to start this program. And now we have 84% uh, of first generations either graduate from college or in college. Without the Dream Big program, I wouldn't have branched out as much. I am a first generation student and it did scare me to try AP classes, but with Dream Big, it didn't seem hard because I knew I had the help that I was going to need. Ms. Moffitt encourages us to not have that fear of going to college. The best thing about teaching these kids in Dream Big is that they appreciate it, they want it. They're the hardest working kids in the school. They want to improve their lives. They understand the sacrifice that their parents have gone through and they want to give back. And because I have kids that have a passion, I have the best teaching job in the school. Melanie has created an impact on our campus that is breaking generational poverty cycles. She takes kids who would never dream of going to college, and these are bright kids, and creating opportunities for them to truly open doors so that they can have a different future. The impact that I'm most proud of is the students that have gone to college and come back and serve their community by being teachers, healthcare workers, service, trade jobs, electricians, welders. They've come back and they've been able to work in their community and boost their families and their culture into believing that if they can do it, anyone can do it. I think the key to finding passion, obviously, is what you feel is important to you. Go to the grassroots, go to the teachers, go to the healthcare workers, find out what they need. Oftentimes we get in a mode of, I'll throw money at the problem, it will fix it. You need to find out what they actually need. And then you can dive in and help fix the problem. That's what I think is the key to a passion. If you wanna have an impact, you have to have the passion. Wow, thank you so much. I look out in this room and there are so many amazing Aggies that I am truly honored to get this award. And I just wanna thank my very supportive family. Um, they're always there for me. I'd like to thank Dr. Crockett, Dr. Smith, Dr. Foley, my very dear friend and amazing Aggie, Suzanne Moore, uh, for always believing in these ideas I have and supporting me. And I would not be anywhere without them. And I've never been more proud to be an Aggie than tonight. So thank you. Now I'm happy to announce the recipient of the Distinguished Service Award, Ellen Rossi. Ellen has made significant contributions to our community, the university, and the world at large. Ellen truly embodies what it means to be an invested citizen of Utah. Part of the SJ and Jesse E. Quinney, Emma Eccles Jones, and Lawson families, Ellen is a fifth generation Utah who is deeply invested in the welfare of all Utahns and the stewardship of our state's natural resources. By leading in her community, Ellen is recognizing the strong women of her family 
before her who were heavily involved in civic work. Her ability to look at people and organizations with similar interests and link them together to create symbiotic successful partnerships is providing further opportunities for those local communities. I've been so fortunate to have great grandparents who were outdoors people and pioneered new sports and new experiences in our natural environment in the state of Utah. And I just love any chance I can get experiencing Utah's great outdoors. The president and I had lunch and I was talking about my passion for the Great Salt Lake and can't we tell these stories differently? Can't we, can't we get the science that's already happening, like a bigger megaphone? And I remember she leaned over and she said, well, you know what I'd like to do? And I was like, what, save the world? <laughs> and she said, I wanna create an institute for land, water, and air. Ellen, just like that, said, I am on board and she wanted to be part of that. She believed it from her heart. She believes it from her legacy. She believes it for her kids' future, and she believes on that for Utah State. We've already made so many substantial steps and served the governor's office, served the legislators. They've already been able to make such wonderful decisions, and so I'm so hopeful for what can come from the beginning and founding of this institute. So we wouldn't be here where we are today without Ellen's influence and direction. Early on we approached Ellen about creating a Great Salt Lake Strike Team in collaboration with the University of Utah. She's really been passionate about how we engage as well as how we provide solutions uh, facing the state on this really important issue. Ellen is a doer and she's a strong advocate for the research and science that leads to solutions to Utah's increasing environmental concerns. She cares about sustaining high quality of life that we enjoy here in our state. And her foresight was incredibly instrumental in the creation of USU's Janet Quinney Lawson Institute for Land, Water, and Air. Really, the Institute's creation last year could not have come at a better time. This, uh, this critical research conducted and shared by this group of experts helps us to shape better policy and extend the life of our state's vital natural resources. It's my dream that the Institute is really something that feels connected and a part of every Utahn's experience, that Utahns in general know that the Institute serves them and that their challenges with their landscapes, with their natural resource management is something that the Institute cares about and can help provide science to help them to be able to live their best lives. Sorry for the slow poke here, but thank you guys so much. Um, I just wanted to say um, for me what an incredible honor this really is for me, and I am truly grateful. Um, but to be honest, the greatest honor for me is to have the opportunity to work so closely with this amazing institution. And it's so um, meaningful to me to be able to serve my family in this way. Utah State is a magical place. It is an incredible university doing incredible things with incredibly innovative leadership. I would just like to give a shout out to Matt White and his team for being bold and changing the script on the impact campaign. It's been a real beauty to watch. And I'd also like to thank you, President Cockett, for your vision and for your commitment to push USU to new heights. You have inspired so much, so many transformative things for all of us who are touched by USU, and I feel so lucky to have worked with you on some of these. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, and especially thank you to Ellen and Melanie for so powerfully representing the Aggie spirit of dedicated service and generosity. It's truly a fantastic thing that you have done. Now I'd like to introduce the Kane Jazz Combo. We enjoyed their background music during the uh, opening reception. 
Uh, they have a special performance for us this evening. You can read a little bit more about the members of the uh, combo in your program. So enjoy the talents of the Kane Jazz Combo. <laughs>
Thank you to our Kane Jazz Combo for that amazing performance. I would also like to thank and recognize an another amazing Aggie and great individual. If you look on your table, the centerpieces, uh, the old main tower, those were designed by Bruce Bugby and Apogee. Um, we have some exciting uh, surprises ahead on how we're going to utilize these. But please give a big round of applause for Bruce and Apogee for the great work that they've done. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Matt White, Vice President for Advancement and President of the Utah State University Foundation Board, and I'm honored to be here with you tonight. As you know, USU is known for providing quality and excellence in education, and it is because of the support of many people like you gathered here tonight, the university is able to continue its tradition of excellence. You heard Marshall mention earlier the celebration we had in November for the launch of the Create Your Aggie Impact campaign that aligns top USU priorities with donor passions to ensure success and the attainment of funding goals. This university-wide initiative-driven campaign focuses on outcomes to accelerate student access and opportunity, elevate the educational experience, develop solutions to the world's challenges, and build a university of distinction. As we continue to enjoy the festivities, I would like to acknowledge all of you who have already made an impact here at USU with a gift of any kind to the university. And this evening, I would like to recognize and thank Old Main Society members who are the epitome of what it means to be true Aggies through service, generosity, and dedication to Utah State University. Because of you, so many students are able to have life-changing experiences they enjoy on our campuses. We are able to have outstanding facilities and enjoy success in our athletic programs. And a great win last night and another one tomorrow, right? <laughs> Thank you, Old Main Society members, for this support. This year, we're bringing in an incredible 158 new inductees into the Old Main Society. An additional 108 current members have, through their continuous and generous giving, advanced levels this year. We recognized them at a reception earlier this evening. And at this time, I would like all the members of the Old Main Society to stand and be recognized. Old Main Society members are our generous donors who have a lifetime giving of at least $25,000 or who have designated a planned gift to Utah State and have become members of our special heritage level of the Old Main Society. Members who have advanced levels have continued in their generous tradition and reached additional giving thresholds. The names of our Old Main Society and sustaining members, those who have given each year for the past five years or more, are printed in your program. Again, thank you to all who contribute to USU through your philanthropic support. We would simply not be where we are without you. Once again, I would like to ask USU President Noel Cockett to join me on stage. Now, I am excited to honor Old Main Society members who, through their timeless effort, have made a significant impact on Utah State in their individual communities and throughout the world. First. I'm honored to introduce our Spirit of Old Main awardees. This year's award goes to our cherished friends, Brent and Bev Robinson, for their incredible dedication to the Old Main Society. The couple who contributed to their communities, professions, and causes in a variety of ways always keeps Utah State University close to their hearts. Theirs is a true partnership in both life and work as a couple, Brent and Bev remain loyal to USU and have served in, in various ca capacities over the years, including Brent, who has served for nine years on the USU Foundation Board, and Bev, who engages and support USU Special Collections and Archives in the Merrill Crazer Library. In addition, the couple has participated in communities in which they have lived the lives and they've worked. USU is 
a tremendous impact on my life. I spent most of my time at Utah State in the engineering department. I still am very impressed with what's going on there. Just as you look around us today at technology that has happened in the last 30 years, it just made sense for us to endow a scholarship. The Brent and Beverly Robinson Endowment has provided students in the electrical and computer engineering department the opportunity to do studies and research that will impact society and it has also impacted their lives as they've been able to spend and focus their time on their studies and research in, in very important fields. We're very grateful for the impact this has made on the college and on these particular students and ultimately society. I started in a time of uncertainty with you know, COVID um, going on and a lot of uncertainty of what the future would hold. However, I was blessed to have received the Robinson Scholarship to help me be financially stable as I move forward into my master's degree. When students graduate from here in engineering, they do have good job offers that make good money, but long term, their opportunities are so much greater if they go on to get a master's degree. And so that's why our endowment is focused primarily on graduate students. It helped me focus on my research. That helped me really step up, present new ideas, and eventually helped me land a job at Sandia National Laboratories. And I think because of them, I'm able to have the career I am having now where I am flourishing and doing a lot of good for the engineering community and the United States as a whole. It just makes you feel good that you're able to make a difference in people's lives. Well, I appreciate our donations to the engineering because we've done a lot of, been involved with that and done a lot of touring and it's just such an amazing school. I just think that it was a, more of a love for me to take some of the money that we donate and put it to the library as well as engineering. That special collection is just amazing. There's so many wonderful things in the back room that people never get to see. It's unbelievable. Well, I think it's always good to give back. And if you, there are many ways, whether it be volunteering or financially or both. We are involved in many things in our community. I think that it's just a good thing to, to think about giving back in whatever way you can. It's, it's very uh, double-sided. I think you get as much as what you give. Well, I don't want to say much, but I do just want you to know how strongly I feel about this university. And at each of our plates tonight, there's a brochure, The Greats, the year 22 in review. And if you look through that, what is going on at this university is incredible. And it doesn't just happen it takes incredible leadership. And we're so fortunate to have had this woman with us. Thank you. Very much. Our next recipient is Sydney Peterson, Old Main Emeriti Awardee. For more than 40 years, Sydney served in a wide variety of roles spanning many areas of the university before retiring in 2022. Most notably, she served as the first woman chief of staff to USU's president and as secretary to the board of, 15, board of trustees for more than 15 years. She also served as secretary to USU Foundation Board. Sydney was, was commend, commended for her admiral leadership and involvement as co-chair of USU's Year of the Woman initiative in 2021, and she was charged with planning and executing USU's comm commencement ceremonies for nearly two decades. In addition to her work at USU, Sydney is an invested member of her community where she has served on numerous civic boards in a variety of capacities. Most of my work over the years has been in the background. That's the place I feel very comfortable. 
We often think it's the presidents and the administrators and everyone else but me that makes that impact, and it's just not true. Every person is making a difference. They're often the individuals who work behind the scenes. They do their work, they do it well, but they are invisible. So Sue thinks of herself as the person behind the scenes, but actually everyone on the university always thought of Sid when there were details and actions to be taken. And she did it by thinking of the big picture and the small details and implementing all of those things with perfection. I would say that Sid was the consummate master of a uniquely Aggie three-ring circus, juggling being the chief of staff with those myriad responsibilities, the board of trustees, including making new board chairs look reasonably competent, and of course commencement. I can't even begin to understand the logistics of trying to be the ringmaster of that event. I organized and executed many presidential and university events, highlighting the best the university has to offer and commencement was the very best of all of these. I think commencement is just such a joyous occasion for the students and their families. I love commencement. This is a huge event involving literally thousands of people and months of preparation, and Sid would move people along with what needed to be done. We really focused on how could this be more enjoyable for students. One thing we implemented was a student commencement speaker. We loved having the bagpipers join us. We included more music in commencement. We just tried to make it more of a celebration than just something you have to do. When I joined the Aggie family over 40 years ago, my first position was working on a Women's Educational Equity Act research grant, making education more equitable for girls and women. It probably had more of an impact on my life than any impact that may have been on those we helped. So when I thought about doing Year of the Woman, there was no doubt in my mind that Sid Peterson should lead that effort. And I think she really brought forward the strength of a woman in a professional world and how they can have that influence on, on how the organization works. So for me, it's thanks to Sid for everything she's done. We were able to bring women's voices, both from the past and the present, to the forefront and tell their stories. It was an amazing year and an amazing way for me to end my career. It was really the bookend of sorts to where I started working on women's issues. I took opportunities as they presented themselves. I worked hard. I enjoyed all the people I worked with, and I got paid to do it. It just doesn't get better than that. It's been a great privilege for me to call Utah State University my home for the last 40 years. This is not my first Old Main event. It's the first time I've been on this side of the event. One thing we learned many years ago was never to turn over the mic to a, an award recipient. <laughs> <laughs> I could finish the speech, everything I wrote that is not in the video. I could recap 40 years for you, or I could tell you where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> But I will simply say thank you so much. It's such an honor, and I'm grateful to President Cockett, Matt White, the university, everyone who made this evening so special. Thank you. We are now pleased to uh, welcome Patrice Densley, a vocal performance student from the Kane College of Arts, to sing Homeward Bound.
Thank you, Patrice. That was beautiful. I'm Travis Lish, a proud Aggie and a member of the USU Foundation Board and a member of the Old Main Society. And I know many of you are thinking right now, oh no, they gave Travis the mic again. <laughs> As an institution, we are so much more because of the special people who support us. And I'm humbled and honored to associate with such wonderful Aggies as those we have recognized tonight. Let's give all the awardees one more round of applause. This has truly been an evening of inspiration showcasing the stories of those who exemplify Utah State's mission of service through learning, discovery, and engagement. And one of the greatest representations of that is our very own President Noel Cockett. Noel, who is stepping down as USU's 16th president in July, is an inspirational, aspirational, and values-driven leader with contributions that have infused nearly every aspect of campus right here at our Logan campus and also at the USU statewide campuses and in the communities throughout the state of Utah. Since taking the helm in 2017, Noel has spearheaded numerous major innovations in the areas of research, educational excellence, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Thanks to Noel's focus on expanding and furthering the institution's research capabilities, USU earned national recognition when it became one of just 146 research universities to earn the R1 Carnegie classification for excellence in research. Also, the university was able to focus much of that research expertise through the newly created Janet Quinney Lawson Institute for Land, Water, and Air and is already working to connect USU research experts with state and national decision makers. A champion for student-centered initiatives and success, Noel has led the change for new academic programs, including most recently, the approval and obtaining of state funding for Utah's only College of Veterinary Medicine. Her focus on student success has allowed for many other accomplishments, including welcoming the university's largest first-year class spearheading a 16% increase in first-generation first-year students in the fall of 2022 against a backdrop of daunting admission trends for institutions all across the, the nation. In addition, there was also an increase of student completion of certificates and degrees by 16%. The launch of the Utah State Promise program that covers the remaining tuition and fees for Pell Grant recipients and the establishment of the iSystem Institute for Transdisciplinary Studies to support student and community health and well-being. USU also celebrated 25 years of excellence in online education during her time as president. Noel's forward focus has enabled the university to flourish despite an ever-changing higher education landscape. Since her leadership began, USU has consistently ranked in the top 10 among pub public universities in the nation by Washington Monthly for Social Mobility, Research, and Service. And in commitment to ensure USU is a, in a place where all feel they belong and can thrive, Noel created a new USU division for diversity, equity, and inclusion, and hired its inaugural vice president last year. And last fall, Noel and several USU leaders at USU signed an agreement, which we're all very proud of, with fellow land-grant institution and historically black college, Fort Valley State University in Georgia, to collaborate on research, education programming, and student support. In other areas of success, Noel's tenure has elevated the prestige and recognition of USU as she has overseen the creation of innovative centers and state-of-the-art buildings that have energized our campuses and our communities. Under her purview, the university was able to secure the state and private funding for the Mehdi Haravi Global Teaching and Learning Center, as well as create the Haravi Peace Institute. Here on this campus, the university completed and opened up 103,000 square foot life sciences building and a USU Moab. A new campus was celebrated with opening the first net zero energy facility in the USU system. Finally, Noel has worked with students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends in a shared commitment to maintain our momentum with a devotion to the mission, legacy, and promising future of Utah State. At the November launch of the Create Your Aggie Impact campaign, excitement was elevated by a record-breaking $110 million fundraising year. Many of you here in this room contributed to our success, and in fact, during Noel's term as president here at Utah State University, 950 Old Main Society members have been inducted. 
The heritage level was introduced and added to the Lamaine Society, recognizing members who have established planned gifts. During President Cockett's, ten President Cockett's tenure, Old Main Society members donated over $70 million to Utah State University. President Noel Cockett has been a visionary leader, setting a strategic course of growth, stability, and forward momentum that will carry us into the future. Her tenure will continue to have an impact long after she leaves her post. And tonight, speaking as a representative for all of you and for all donors to USU, as well as members of the Old Main Society, we have been so grateful for your leadership. Over the last six years of your presidency, you have elevated Utah State University to new heights. Beyond all of this, you have been a dear friend. Your warmth and kindness and love for this great institution, its students, faculty, staff, alumni, and friends have shown through everything you've done. President Cockett, I'd like to invite you to join me on the stage. On behalf of all of us, we would like to present you with a gift as an expression of our appreciation. This is a bracelet to add to your collection so we can hear you jingling when you come. <laughs> Custom made by Needham Jewelers. We hope it will remind you of our appreciation, admiration, and our love. Thank you, President Cockett. So I didn't realize Levi had taken so many photos of me, but I do want to point that one out where I have not aged since our wedding, but John. <laughs> right? You're like, who is that guy? No, um, I don't even know what to say. It, you know, I was on, I think it was November 10th when I, uh, let the Board of Higher Education know that I was stepping down, and then I announced it November 22nd. Well, I've kept on going, and it pops in my head occasionally. Um, I've noticed I've had more and more people come in saying, before you leave, I need this, or can you do that before you leave? And so my list is getting longer. But I have to say, tonight, <laughs> I realized I really am stepping down. and. You know, being president sometimes is, it's hard sometimes. Uh, I think that, you know, since I started six years ago, um, I'm definitely grayer. I'm maybe a little stiffer. I'm not as in shape. I sleep more during the day and less at night. Um, but it's, it's been uh, an incredible opportunity to meet so many wonderful people. And no matter what I do and where I go, my love for Utah State will never be diminished. This is an incredible institution. But we are an incredible institution because of the incredible people who are part of it. And I have absolutely no doubt that Utah State is going to shine into eternity because we are an amazing group of people. So from my heart, from John's heart, thank you for the honors that we've had to serve in the capacity as president and first gentleman. It is my honor to serve you folks, so thank you. President Cockett, thank you for your years of exceptional and inspirational service to this university. Um, I must say your tenure will go down as one of the most dynamic tenures of any president in the history of this institution. And your impact, your Aggie impact, will be felt for generations to come. You know, I stand in awe at the amazing and outstanding uh, generosity of the people in this room tonight. 
And I want each of you to know that what you do is essential to the success and progress of this university as we celebrate its 135th birthday. Our success would not be possible without the strong supporters that are gathered in this room tonight. And I want to extend my personal and heartfelt thank you to each of you as Aggies. We are excited now to share with you our final musical number of the evening. Many of us, hopefully all of us, have sung many times the alma mater hymn. And in honor of USU's comprehensive campaign that we launched this last year, the <clears throat> professor of piano in the King College of the Arts, um, Kevin Olson, created a special arrangement and added a meaningful third verse to the alma mater hymn. It pays tribute to the great alumni of USU. Corey Evans, USU Associate Professor and Director of Choral Activities, has produced this video featuring the USU chamber singers and their special soloists. And we are pleased to share that video with you for the very first time tonight.
Please enjoy the dessert reception in the International and Sunburst Lounge. Thank you all for joining us this evening. And remember, go Aggies! <laughs> <laughs>